The workflow I'm about to show you in Cursor AI in today's video, no other YouTuber will ever show you. This workflow I'm about to show you with multi-agents working on your repository at the exact same time is probably one of the most powerful workflows I've personally seen since the launch of ChatGPT 3.5. And if you know me and you know this channel, you know I don't like over-exaggerating things. This deserves all the hype. Let's check it out. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the new agent mode up here in the top right, Cursor AI, and the ability to do multi-agent running in parallel. I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how to handle this. Your next question might be, is Corbin, what on earth is to the right of you, behind you? What is all this front-end amazingness? This is coming from a very big series I'm doing on this channel where I'm showing you how to quite literally vibe code an entire application from start to finish. But first, let's go over that workflow that I referenced earlier in the video. I'm going to show you an example of this workflow. Then we're going to give context of where this even originated from and then I'm going to give you tips and tricks. Right now, I'm just going to set the model to GPT-5 codex high. I'm going to have a whole separate video explaining why I personally really like that for the specific context of if you're an ex inexperienced developer, you should be using that model. Whole different video. Make sure to subscribe here. Let's say I'm looking at my front end. You know, I can do this for the back end as well, but let's say I'm looking at the front end. I'm scrolling through the front end and I find a component that I don't necessarily like. What is a component, Corbin? That is just going to be one of these sections. Typically, if you refactor your code correctly or organize your code correctly, each one of these little sections here should be its own file. This is for cleansliness. Let's say I find this, I'm like, you know, what? I don't like this. I screenshot it. I will begin the first agent. So here's my prompt. This looks great. We got to make it more fun. Add lead the llama somewhere here on the corner, corner over here. And on hover, he says, let's start, e.g., some type of animation like this. Lead the llama. Who's lead the llama? Uh, you got to be an OG on this channel to know. But lead the llama is a nice little lead, the designer for the software. Here is the power. Boom, go. Now, what's next? You're running one agent, run them in parallel. I would tell you your first tip here is run the agent on a separate page. Therefore, if I come to this page and I'm like, you know what? I don't necessarily like meet leet on the login page. I'm going to start a new agent here. New agent, meet leet. Can you remove this? Remove this from the login page. Go. All right, next agent. All right, let me go through the website a little bit. All right, I'm going to click through, continue. Uh, let's go to settings. Um, you know, Leet Lab here, this looks really good, but I need a little bit more pizzazz on experimental goods. So I'm going to screenshot this. I'm going to go ahead and grab that screenshot, put it in here. I like this setting, but can we add a little more flair with Leet the Llama? What is occurring here? We are quite literally running multiple agents at parallel, attacking multiple sides of the front end, whether it's the landing page, whether it's the login page, whether it's the setting page, they're all going off. And what's incurring here is I can keep going down this workflow. And what is next in this workflow is I'm going to be requested to review the code. One thing to keep in mind is that coding with AI a year ago, two years ago, if I were to ask the same type of request, it would be very hit or miss. What occurs now, though, is that these agents will literally spend 5, 10, 15 minutes. I had one running for 20 minutes while I did my laundry. It wrote 1,400 lines of code. I reviewed the code and it was all good. So what is this workflow? What are we doing? This isn't a new thing. We were already doing this in real software companies when you were a senior engineer. These agents would be junior engineers and they would provide code for you to review. So now functionally in Cursor AI, you are the senior engineer. Therefore, when they are done with a task, add lead the llama, I can check out the task. I can see the original prompt here. Okay, let's check out down here. Nice. Lead the llama is on the right here. I can make adjustments over here. You know what? Lead the llama needs to be a little bit more up on the top right here. I don't like this round rectangle behind it. Let's make it transparent. Screenshot. In addition, we can add other UI elements that we already have here. This is a perfect example. I like this. So I would say something along the lines of make it more on the corner and transparent background. Make it look more like the one that says yummy packs. What you need to understand is that artificial intelligence is so good right now that it's going to see the word yummy packs and be like, where is this being referenced in the code? It's going to read the entire code. And then once it identifies that this UI element here is what I was referring to, it's going to translate that to down here. This would be like a junior engineer under me giving me code. It looks decent. And I tell the junior engineer, no, keep going back at that code. We got another example here. Remove the element from login page. I can check out the login page now. Log in. Perfect. It removes meet leet. Therefore, I can keep all. For larger, bigger, more complex task, I would suggest you do a PR request when adding it to the relevant code. But as you can see to the bottom left here, we are currently in the branch of front done. Therefore, I'm not worried about affecting the original main branch, which is our production. While these keep generating, let me give you more context. You might be asking yourself, how does this guy know this stuff? It's because I run a software company. Run bump ups here. And at bump ups, we do internship classes. In these internship classes, I run a team of five engineers. My job is to associate labor with those engineers. And one thing on X that I've been talking about a lot is that the real barrier of entry to coding now isn't actually knowing how to code. The real barrier of entry is knowing what to say next, knowing what projects and tasks to identify next. Therefore, a tool like this, in the original ways of handling it, this was me with the fire. And then we got our builders here with the hammers. 
Uh, absolutely beautiful hammers. I would identify labor to each engineer here, and we would do something in software development called sprints. What a sprint is, for all y'all that really want to learn real software development, is a two-week work period. So right here, not, not like when you're running, not like when you're running that 30-second, 100-meter sprint. No, no, sprint here is two weeks of labor. Now, what you need to understand and what's happened literally in the last couple of days and Obviously, a lot of people that do social media don't know this because they don't work in actual companies that do software engineering is if I were to identify labor like this to an engineer, for example, there was a big agent workflow that I did when it came to the underlying settings page, studio settings, this labor associated here with all these different tabs and UI elements and making it look like this took a agent 40 minutes to do. But the reason it took 40 minutes to do is because I knew what to say in the underlying chat to get an output like that. What I want you to understand though, is that the old way of handling this kind of logic, e.g. a human, a junior engineer, handling this kind of information, this would take two to three weeks. And on top of that, it would require me to review the code a little bit more intensely because one thing that AI does really well is if you know how to prompt it, you get the right code outputs. But with a junior engineer, it requires a lot more discretion. So what you'll notice is that the enhanced setting with Lead the Llama is still going, but I don't care because I'm already working on the next task at Lead the Llama for fun. This is the original one that here that we said, you know what? It wasn't good the first time. So if I scroll down here, there we go. And it has a very similar UI. Now, yes, when I hover, it doesn't say the correct hover word, but I don't care because what I can do is I can simply just tell it to do it again, provide more context, provide an image. If I had to tell you three things you need to learn right now when it comes to AI in this new generation, it would be this. The three major things you need to learn right now, one of them is gonna be kind of funny. You're gonna be like, oh, this is kind of funny, is knowing what to say next, knowing what actually needs to be built in an app. I know that sounds dumb on the surface, but y'all gotta understand from my experience when using this new workflow in the last couple of days, what I built out in this front end would have taken me three to four weeks on the old way of coding with AI. If I didn't have AI, that would have taken me eight to 12 weeks to build out because I would have to have typed every single line. So what you need to understand is you need to know what to say next. The second thing you need to understand is the ability to know when code conflicts and know when to associate certain labor. If you're completely new to coding or more inexperienced, I would highly recommend when doing these kind of agent parallel workflows, never associate a task on the same page. I'm gonna do a whole nother video on the back end. Don't worry, everyone Everyone that loves the back end, don't worry, I'm gonna do a whole video for you. I'm just trying to help the people that wanna just tackle apps in the beginning. So usually people that tackle apps in the beginning are more front end heavy. What I want you to understand is that if I set an agent to do a task within the landing page, e.g. the homepage, don't set another agent to do another task on the homepage if you're a beginner, because you're gonna run into a situation where you could potentially have errors and conflicts in the code. So the way I want you to approach it is you would set a task for the homepage, set a task for the login page, set a task for the value page, and proceed. Your next question might be, okay, Corbin, this is really cool, but how do I know what to say next? And I've got in an X post about this where basically an X user said spot on exactly what I'm describing here, the gap, where the X user said, can you give an overview of what the task was you gave it? And that would help a lot. That's the gap, y'all. And don't worry, if you want to learn how to essentially take the position of a software engineer that is a senior level software engineer that knows how to associate labor in an application, check out the series. I'm going to leave it in the description down below. It's no joke. First episode is 22 minutes. Second episode is 34 minutes. The third one coming out is 42 minutes. And I think the fourth one's going to be 60 minutes. I am showing in this series how to build out a real application from a perspective of a real engineer. Therefore, you are going to know what to associate next for labor for these agents. I'm going to show you how to sign up. I'm going to show you the database. I'm going to show you functions. I'm going to show you storage. I'm going to show you get paid. I'm going to show you live app. And the one thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to teach this as if you've never coded before. Because the one thing I hate when people try to teach stuff is they use too much developer jargon. It's almost like they're trying to gatekeep the skill. Check out that playlist. Is that playlist going to take hours of your time to learn? Yes, because I'm not teaching pottery. So you genuinely want to learn how to do software development and you genuinely want an edge right now. Take the hours to learn. Also, make sure to follow me on X. Show some love. Do some cool posts here. A lot of fun. That just about does it in today's video. You just learned how to do multi-agents in a workflow, which is one of the most powerful things I've seen since GBT 3.5. So as you already know, these style videos, I'll see you in the next. This multi-agent feature is probably one of the most powerful features I've ever seen in my entire life of software developing so much so that the labor that I would originally had associated to junior engineers would have taken weeks. Now it takes literally under 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Who cares? Just throw another agent. If you know how to prioritize the labor and give the labor correctly type of video. And then we got our builders here with the hammers. Uh, absolutely beautiful hammers.